Good morning my friends. It's quarter to nine in the morning. Um, last night I was burning some bay leaves in my lovely big old um, mm, bowl. I think, I think it was used for for keeping wine in, you know, with, with ice in it or something. Anyway, so I was burning some bay leaves in there. Some bay leaves from the gardens, of course, my own bay leaves. Because to burn one or two bay leaves in your room before you go to sleep aids good dreaming and restful sleep. That's just one of the benefits of bay leaves. So at some point, when I get the time, I'm going to harvest lots of bay leaves and dry them flat for posting and perhaps put some in with books or whatever it is that I post. Because, to, like I say, to burn one or two bay leaves in your room before you go to sleep is incredibly good for your sleep. Of course, you've got to burn them safely, so you have to do them in a little a little tin or a little metal bowl or something. But um, I've been doing this now for quite some time and uh, I, suppose it, I suppose it started or the notion of the power of the of the sweet bay started long long ago when I was a child because my grandmother would buy sweet bay sweet bay leaves they were incredibly expensive back in those days and uh, she'd buy a little jar of them and she would put half of a bay leaf into milk that that she warmed at night to drink um but that was, even then, that was quite a rare thing. That was like a luxury thing to do, you know. So she didn't do it too often. So I, I expect that she did it when she felt the need for it. Anyway, um, I never imagined. <laughs> I never imagined that I could grow bay, sweet bay, here in Ireland. It never occurred to me. Um... And, and when it did um, sort of, I suppose, just sort of come to light, because I never, I never planned it. I never said, oh, I'm going to plant a bay tree. Um, it was a cutting that I put into a pot and grew on and planted out and hoped for the best. And you know how things go. And uh, the whole notion of bay becoming almost... Um, almost part of the natural landscape here just seemed highly improbable I think we're going to go out Jack look at him on his big double on his big king size feather duvet you've become a bit of a lazy boy Jack a bit of a couch potato <laughs> he's, he's just looking at me thinking oh god should I alright then <laughs> come on then Let's go out, let's go out. So, um, hmm. Oh, I'll just, I'll just show you. Hold on a moment, Jack, Jack, hold on, hold on. I'll just show you um, some of the big bunches of bay that I'm drying. You see, when the bay is dried like this, it doesn't dry flat, but it does dry oh. very well. Look, look how crunchy it is. And, uh, I've got some here beside the stove. This is what I took last night. That's very, very dry. But if I was going to be posting any of this, I would have to dry it flat. So I'll have to sort out how to do that. Probably between sheets, sheets of mesh or something. Anyway, that's for another day. Come on, Jack, let's go out. So look at that, there's a little bit of sun shining this morning. It's 
still windy, still cold. I've got um, clothes drying here. I bought, I borrowed my Kelly kettle this morning. Look, here we go. There's my coffee. <sighs> but look, so, some of my, <laughs> some of the bay that I grow is enormous. Look at the size of this leaf. Look, <laughs> it just covers my hand. That's crazy. So, um, oh look, one of the house plants that one of my children bought me. I think it was for my birthday last year. I've put out here on the veranda. And um, I got this beautiful little, it looks like copper or something. No, it's not copper, is it? it looks like bronze or it has a bronze effect. It's a little, um, it's a little trivet uh, with three frogs. Can you see, just you see it? I got that in a charity shop for a, it was a euro or two, you know, it was this, one of those little oddities that was just sitting there on the shelf. And I thought, oh, I'll take that. So, my lemon verbena is coming into leaf. Look at that. The outside one. The one in the tunnel hasn't come into leaf yet. And there's all the gorgeous euphorbia. Now, I must show you what I've been doing around the front because, of course, as is my want, <laughs> my, my need to keep busy. Got some stuff to take around with the compost heap. Um, I'll just show you this first. The geranium and the aquilegia and the ribes and the buddleia, which doesn't look too bad now since I've cut it and it's going to come on really well. And in here, a little rose that's kind of struggling. A wee bit of sedge in there. There's the fern and the ivy. And this is a perennial poppy. I must get it out of that pot and into the ground. Um, look how spring-like it's all looking. And the leaves are coming out on the cotoneaster. Look at this. Isn't that wonderful? So, I'll just go down here and I'll, I'll show you what I've been up to. It's a bit windy. Now, my kale, I think there's been um, uh, between the storms and slugs. It's struggling a wee bit but I'm not going to give up on it yet and if and if it does come to nothing I've got lots more backup kale to put in there. So what I might do is just kind of grow it on a wee bit in, in pots and make it a bit stronger and sturdier. Okay, look at this. I've been clearing up the bank along here and what a clear up. Now I didn't want to um, go down too deep into the beautiful mulchy, woody, leafy layers that's down there, but just enough to let the plant, well, some of the plants through. Um, mm, very pleased with this. I put little cuttings of um, box in along there. Look, they've all taken. So I'm going to snip those, just um, snip them down a little bit to make them a wee bit um, bushier. So look at this, and there was a cutting of black currant I put in there. Fingers crossed. So. Show sure you. You haven't seen this part of the gardens before. When I arrived here, this, this, this is actually a huge fall. Um, the slope, oh, it's probably about 15 feet, maybe a bit more. But originally, this was like a little kind of a dump or something that was used for years. So I just left it and I just threw lots and lots of cuttings and stuff down over it. And then, see this beautiful mossy covered tree? 
this is an this is an elder, and the elder just sprung up from nowhere, and it's massive now. So what I do, you can just see in there behind the hedge, I've got plastics and bottles and bits and bobs that all have to be recycled. I wait until I've got a really big heap and then a friend of mine who has a trailer takes it off to the municipal dump where it's all sorted. Well, I sort it out beforehand. But anyway, so I'm very, very pleased with all this, all the work that's been done here. And uh, no wonder I was feeling tired there for a day or two. So you can see lots of cuttings and stuff down here. I've just thrown down the bank. I've always been a great believer in piling, piling biodegradable stuff up and letting it go. Now can you see down there, there's a big stone behind that laurel and there's a stone on the top. Well that was absolutely visible for about the first four or five years because of course that was just a very muddy bank. So I was planting little bits and pieces into it to stabilise it. And of course you can see it's been successful. So much so now that little woodland plants are springing up like this little, this little fern just by the base of the tree. Couldn't be more natural really. So if I go back here, let me just go back to the edge of this bank. And then you can, oh, and then you can see. See, there's quite a slope. If I put the camera down like this, you can see the slope. When I say it's all sloping off to the north, I'm not exaggerating. So, what's this big piece of wood I hear you ask? This is a, a, a huge timber that I picked up on the beach up near Sligo um, 14 years ago, something like that. And I literally dug a little hole and stuck it into the, so into the earth. The earth was very clay, you know, very kind of, um, uh, you know, that very tough clay. And um, it, was, it was the only thing standing out here for a long time till the trees grew. But the remarkable thing is, it's still standing. And I had some American neighbours renting the cottage next door years and years and years ago. And Sheila, Sheila and Brendan were their name, Sheila put this little fellow in here. <laughs> Look, there's a wee stone as well. Funny, isn't it? It's still there. Um, it's kind of gone off on a little bit of a, a slope. But look, it's still very firm in the ground. There's a little piece of... Um, crystal. It's been there for years. And then this little piece of wood, I don't know where that's coming from at all. Strange little thing. A little piece of driftwood then that was hammered on the side of it. And all the moss growing up around the bottom. Quite beautiful. So, I shall walk around this way. I think I should just stop every so often and let you have a, a proper look. All that white stuff on the ground there is oats. Porridge oats that I've put out from the birds. You can see the leaves are out right in the spire here over there. green, misty, misty green. The 
And there's the Forsythia flowers out. I think I need to do this more often, just to stop every few paces and pan around. There's the lad, Jack the lad. He's been oh, look at this. Look at this, little mushrooms. Hmm. And when I was, because I'm, I'm, I'm clearing out all, all the bits and bobs here, getting them all ready to go to the dump. But there's this old um, uh, lawnmower box. I mean, it's absolutely good, but the lawnmower has long since broken. You know how it goes. And the reason why I've put it in there, beside the bamboo, is that there was a beautiful frog in it. So I thought, okay, I'm just going to leave that there then. So that's a little home for it. This is a beautiful spindle. This is coming into leaf as well. That's a native Irish bush, the spindle. And the catoniaster, that's coming into leaf. And all the periwinkle. That's the evergreen periwinkle. I never thought that would take off very well there. I just put a little bit in beside the pyracantha, which is this here. But it's taken a long time. It does take a long time to get established. But it's certainly very well established now. I must cut out some of that sedge. It needs trimming. You see, I'm, I'm doing my little bit of filming this morning with you very much in mind. Because I just want you to see what I see. Look at this. Apple blossom. Not quite ready yet, but not too far off. And look at the geranium. I love these big clumps of geranium. Because when they come up in the spring, they just have such a promise of summer about them. There's the raspberry. And I don't know what this is called. I call it the snowball bush. I suppose that's one of its little generic names. another apple tree with lots of promise now I want to get my potatoes planted this weekend lots of different containers. It'll be a little bit of an experiment to see which containers give the 
best um, produce, I suppose, at the end. Look at the lovely white blossom up there on the black thorn. I left the door of the tunnel open last night. It's still nice and warm in here. My coffee's gone cold. I'll have to warm that up. I give everything a jolly good watering in here yesterday. So that's going to plump up those buds on the clematis. It's an evergreen clematis, by the way. And flowers most profusely. Look at all the purple sprouting broccoli on here. Now, there's a stir fry calling to me. Look at that. Beautiful. Now there's even some little flower buds on the chives. Look at that. Do you know the chives flowers are delicious in salads? They have quite a sort of um, a meaty texture. Something like a cross between um, an oniony kind of a chicken and a mushroom. But the flowers are delicious. Of course they look gorgeous too. If you want to be a real show-off, you know, chives flowers in your salad that you serve to guests. With maybe a few nasturtium flowers in there. And maybe a few little viola or pansy flowers in there. There's so many flowers that are edible. I mean, it's just a cornucopia of flavour and colour and show-offiness. <laughs> There's the magpie flying down there. Good morning, Mrs. Magpie. Near the wood pigeon, perhaps, in the background. No. Might just take a little, a little walk down here. Look, the carpet of green is just springing up everywhere. Isn't this gorgeous? It's all the wild carrot and the ivy and orchids and ferns and primroses. Even tiny little primroses. It's a very sad reflection on our society and the agricultural part of it in particular that primroses in the UK are now endangered. Imagine that. Oh, I prefer not to imagine it. They're very profuse here at Bealtaine. Because, of course, I don't use any chemicals. It's as simple as that. When, if ever, are humankind going to learn that when you spray chemicals on your mother, the end result is dreadful. Look at the celandines coming up down there. There's a few just ready to open up. In fact, one has opened up down there. Beautiful celandines. Let's see what else there is down here. Spring is sort of unfurling. There's all the buds on the hawthorn. That's the lords and ladies. And there's some beautiful celandines there. I 
There's a little bit of piece of box look, that I stuck in there on a walk up from some part of the garden. I must have had a little piece of box in my hand. Wherever I put that in the ground here, it grows. Still a little bit wet here in this path, but there has been a tremendous amount of rain, which is the typical spring. And now I'm just pointing the camera towards where Gaia Sophia will be will be placed. The goddess of the well, the abundant mother. Water flowing, 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 flowing. Isn't that wonderful to see? And the spurge growing onto it and into it. And all the little secret places where it flows. And the way Mother Earth seems to carve out her own destiny in water. I've tended her for so long that I can do nothing but scorn at people who want to foretell the future of this beautiful, beautiful centre of the universe. And this, the same people who do nothing to help her. Look at the flowers on the dead nettle. more than likely the big issue with human kind or human unkind as many are the sheer arrogance and ego I keep coming back to this you know that we need to drop the G and take up the C change the ego to the eco Look at the flow in that water, isn't that fantastic? Just fantastic. So pleased with that. Now I'm going to delicately step across here. Oh, managed it. Oh, I'm at 29 minutes. So it's going to end soon. So I'm going to say blessings to you all. Blessings to you all. And if spring hasn't come just yet to your part of the world, or autumn in some cases, it's just round the corner. Blessings.